biggest part of my strategy for that was radical acceptance and it plays a bigger role in how you're dealing with your shit right now surrounding this pandemic than you think. YouTube fam, it's your girl Grace back with another upload and today I just want to talk about a few things that you can do to try to lift your mood from the quarantine and whatever debilitating thing might be going on with you. I feel like everybody I know is struggling in some sort of way and lately I have been in the dumps just bad. Feeling sorry for myself, constantly on my phone, constantly looking at social media, constantly shopping. Today I went out to the car to escape my children and ended up wig shopping. I had such a small amount of time I needed to call the bank pay a bill and just do important adulting stuff and I spent 20 minutes wig shopping and then when I was about to make the purchase I was like I need to figure out if this is a reputable company and then I was doing research on a wig company for 20 minutes before I realized what the hell am I doing what the hell am I doing like I need to be doing my life I'm out in the car hiding from my children I felt so sorry for myself yesterday I felt so sorry for myself the day before and I just mean literally like slump and depression sorry for myself about being home with my kids and having to teach them to clean and having to clean alongside them while they steady making messes and dealing with my toddler and dealing with moving we're moving in a month and it's stressing me the f out and i have just been in a place of like this is not on fleek <laughs> to use a term from five years ago i mean y'all it's not on fleek it's not okay for me to be sitting around every day feeling so damn sorry for myself that can't do anything the whole house is a mess the only area of my house that's not a mess is the area you can see on the camera because i was like i ain't gonna show y'all the depths of despair that's happening all around here i'm gonna do it i'm gonna deal with that tonight <laughs> while the kids aren't here. But I was like, first I wanna come to y'all while it's still daylight and just talk to y'all about just a few things that have helped me today and that are continuing to help me to learn to process the uncertainty that we feel when life is so precarious and we are in a freaking global pandemic. There is no way y'all to know what's gonna happen or if life is ever gonna get back to normal or how long it's not going to be normal. We don't know how long we gonna have to wear masks to freaking grocery stores, potentially not have our children in school and not have playgrounds and parks and things that our kids can go to even be able to take our kids to the store again and feel okay about it I mean right now I don't take them anywhere because we're quarantining the only place I go is to the grocery store or gas when I need it once every two weeks and just that has got me stressed but there's uncertainty about how long this is gonna be and my youngest daughter she's three and a half so she's asking me all the time like yesterday she asked to go to the library the makeup store which I think is TJ Maxx I'm pretty sure or Target a McDonald's house to the play place you know basically she's asking me every day because every day I tell her the same thing they're closed we're in the middle of a virus season da 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 and she doesn't understand because she's only three and a half and every time she would ask I was feeling sorry for her and sorry for myself and like this is such a sad situation I don't know if I'm ever gonna take her anywhere ever again and as a result of that we are just going to be stuck up in this house making messes and then something happened where I basically realized like it doesn't have to be this way I don't have to stay stuck I can start brainstorming strategies to deal with my life <laughs> so that is what I wanted to to talk to y'all about today was just getting out of the funk because sometimes when that stuff like this happens when there's any sort of crisis in our life we get into a funk and that's perfectly normal there's nothing wrong with it you can be in your funk you can stay in your funk but once you get to the place where you're like this is no longer manageable for my life you really want to start figuring out how do I get through the funk and get through the hard stuff so that by the time the majority of the hardness has passed of the scenario whatever that may be that's out of our hands and out of our control other than social distancing for the pandemic there really isn't anything we can do but social distance unless you're a doctor or a nurse or on the front lines we're trying to figure out the vaccine all the rest of us regular folk really can't do anything to change the scenario except for practice social distancing but what we can do is control what's in our head we can try to control our thoughts and try to control the outcomes as a result of our thoughts that's about it and that's gonna help us control our environment which many 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 studies say lead to a number of outcomes in our lives i for one i'm totally overwhelmed with my environment right now and that is leading to other outcomes for me so what i wanted to do was just bring up a few things that might help you guys to get out of the funk because they have really helped me in the last couple days first thing you have to do to get out of the funk is practice something called radical acceptance and radical acceptance is basically the idea that you take the situation that you're in no matter what it is no matter how awful it is and you say i to 
yourself or you write it or you internalize it or you meditate on it or you repeat it or you do whatever but you basically say I accept that this is my scenario right now I accept that this bad thing this bad thing this bad thing this sad thing this hard thing this hard all of this is happening and that this is my battle to face and I had to do this last year when I was trying to get out of and leave my abusive marriage I kept having to practice radical acceptance because I kept wanting to change my mind and be like actually I can't accept that because it's too hard to do and I don't think I'll ever be able to do it so I just can't do it I was so super depressed I was like stupid depressed I felt like because I'm so depressed I will never I literally had the thought in my mind I will never be able to hold down a full-time job I will not be able to handle that so I had to radically accept you are in a position where if you are ever going to be out of this marriage you have to work a full-time job this is what you have to do you have to accept that and as a result of that I started applying and as a result of that I got one as a result of that I got a great one they even offered me more than they showed the salary level was on the application that I applied for those are just a few examples of how I've overcome very difficult things especially not the job so much the mindset about the job even though that was a big thing for me but the marriage thing that took a whole hell of a lot and a very very long time for us to get to where we are now so biggest part of my strategy for that was radical acceptance and it plays a bigger role in how you're dealing with your shit right now surrounding this pandemic than you think radical acceptance is really a very key starting point I've been through enough therapy to know that much I'm not a therapist but I've been through enough therapy to know it's a key starting point for accepting what you need to do and what you need to face I realized yesterday after three days of feeling so sorry for myself I just could have curled up in a ball and just withered away like a feather because I felt so damn fragile and so sorry for myself I was like you have to start applying the same strategies you applied last year to this scenario and just realize you can do this stuff like for me I'm I'm going to write out later tonight actually I probably will write it out We're literally physically write it out I can pack up my house myself I can accomplish this move all by myself. I mean, I'm gonna try to hire people to help me as much as possible. I can move through a global pandemic. I don't know how yet, but it's going to happen and I can do it. I can teach my older boys how to start doing life skills that they don't have yet. Cooking and cleaning, there's life skills they don't possess because me nor their father have taught them. And I'm capable of doing that as well as helping them with their homework, which I've been telling myself, I can't do that. And I can't, I can't, I can't and I will. I have been lying to myself about my ability to handle my daughter's discipline issues. She's been yelling, she's had a horrible tone, she's been kicking, she's been screaming, she's been temper tantruming, she's been hitting, she's been all manner of crazy y'all. And I realize it's the stages she's in, part of it, but also part of it is because I'm not being consistent enough with her discipline. It's my fault, it's my fault. Part of it also is other issues that aren't my fault, but I still need need to deal with what's in front of me and what what's happening when I'm with her because I co-parent with her father those are just a few things that I have to tell myself you can do this oh the other thing I have to tell myself you can set a schedule for your time with your daughter you can set a schedule whoa like you can do it I just realized like I have been really 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 wrong. I've been really down on myself about a lot of things it comes down to not being nice to myself but it also just comes down to not believing in myself about basic ass things you know I write down in my dreams list every day that I want to be a New York Times bestseller but somehow I think I could do that easier than teaching my boys life skills somehow I think I can do that easier than I can teach my daughter some disciplinary <laughs> skills <laughs> so I mean it's all hard but sometimes I'm like Grace you believe in yourself in some areas but with the parenting thing I routinely don't believe in myself enough so that's just an example for me the first step is like just having radical acceptance the second step is really looking at the things that you are facing that that you feel like is making your life very difficult especially amidst the global pandemic but it could be really anything you're going through I know for a lot of my friends the stuff they're going through the global pandemic is just making it feel so so much more bigger and much more exasperated in a way that's totally completely overwhelming I think for me this move would just feel like a move but the move in the middle of this time frame feels like I'm, I'm overwhelmed I'm done for I can't do it and then I get lost in the loop thoughts so whatever it is that you're struggling with be sure that you write down a list and then counter it with I can do these things or even I will I will do these things I will figure this out I am capable of doing blase split I am capable of blah 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 
just write it down and be very specific. And this isn't even what people would call manifesting. This is actually just doing something that has proven to help people, like scientifically proven to help us reach our goals. Not even talking about your wildest dreams. If you want to be the next, you know, Jill Scott, I'm talking about just things that are making your life difficult right now and making it feel unbearable. First thing is radical acceptance. The second thing is telling yourself that you can and you will do these things. And the third thing is just doing a little bit of something every day, whatever it is, just a little tiny bit of it. So today I was feeling overwhelmed about the house. I was feeling overwhelmed about packing and purging. So I just told myself the one thing I'm going to do today, no matter what, the one thing is I'm just going to go through, because we have a bookshelf over here that it became the spot for all the mail and all the junk and all the stuff that everybody brings in just goes to there. It's like the dumping ground bookshelf. So I told myself while the kids are self entertaining, hopefully they will at some point today, which they did. I'm just going to sit here and go through at least the mail. And just that one thing, I felt so much better. I went through like a stack of mail like this bit. So I went through that and just that one thing made me feel like I can do one more thing. How about I go through the papers on the, the coffee table? And so then I did that. And then I thought I could do one more thing. My daughter distracted me and then I had to stop. But now I feel like I can do some stuff tonight because I feel a little bit motivated just because I saw a little bit of progress. And I was like, what if I get to the point like by the time I'm actually packing up boxes, I have thrown away so much stuff, <laughs> shit up. <laughs> that there's so much less to pack because I have been such an amazing purger. Like that's my goal right now. I'm going to do what I need to do to get rid of stuff. And so just doing a little bit every day helped me to feel like I could do more. Because I've been in this spot where I've been feeling so much self-pity and just sorry for myself and so overwhelmed with sadness and grief and uncertainty and all of that jazz that it's made me feel such a high level of shame that I haven't even been able to face myself which has left me paralyzed which has made me feel like I can't strategize and that's why I wanted to make this video in particular because I really feel for people who get paralyzed by overwhelm and our house gets out of control I kind of want to show y'all but I kind of feel like oh Jesus that would be really vulnerable I have really 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 let my house unravel and I think that's because of just being paralyzed and partly probably very likely low-grade depression but it's kept me from strategizing it's kept me from even doing a Google search Google and I did this yesterday finally Google how do I move? What are the steps for moving? What are the things I need to be thinking about three weeks before, you know, two weeks before, one week before? And I just have started looking for answers. And that's my usual. I'm the person who does all the research trying to figure stuff out. And I haven't even done that because I've been like paralyzed, like I said. So what I hate for y'all to go through is have to live through days and weeks and months of being paralyzed by grief and sadness about this and not have even the insight even access to the insight of just a few things that might help you feel better and you don't really get that until you practice radical acceptance and start really grieving for what the losses are and what you need to do and then facing that and believing that you can actually do that stuff and then starting to do it little by little each day. So I hope I'm not making it sound like it's so easy to do because all of these things are so hard for me. They are so, so very hard for me, but especially someone with all sorts of, I just have so many mental health issues in terms of depression, anxiety, panic attacks, CPTSD. I've had postpartum depression, seasonal depression. There's so many different ways that I have struggled with overwhelming emotional feelings that keep me in a hard place. I hope you know that whenever I bring stuff like mental health tips and stuff, it's not anything that comes easy to me. It's not anything I'm not currently practicing, that I'm not currently working on because I am currently facing my ish so that I can get through this and hopefully have my kids not behind on school, not living in squalor over here and really, really thrive through it because I just don't ever want to survive. My channel is called Out Here Trying to Survive, but I really, really want us to survive and thrive. So that's all I got for y'all today. Please leave me a comment. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. Tell me if you have anything that you would like for me to talk about later or any other mental health tips of things that I have gone through that have worked for me. And if you would, please share this video with someone who you think would benefit from seeing it, who might be overwhelmed by the global pandemic. Y'all have a great time. Bye. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment.